Well, Sergeant Major, we've met a few times at the annual ASA, AUSA conference in DC and at Secretary McHugh's retirement. It's nice to see you again. Thank you for taking the time today. Alex, it's great to see you too, and thanks for having me. It's, it's always an honor to talk with you. And before you retired, your career really was so impressive. I don't want to embarrass you, but I want to just read a few of your accomplishments here. Uh, you served in the first, second, third and fourth infantry divisions. You are uh, decorated with the Bronze Star Medal. You were the fourth in infantry division command sergeant major. And oh, by the way, the sergeant major of the entire army. So um, of all these accomplishments, do you have something uh, that you were most proud of? And what was it that kind of drove you to have this type of leadership? Yeah, and it's pretty simple. I'm just most proud to call myself a soldier and now a soldier for life. And I mean that. I mean. You know, I, those are all great accomplishments of, and dreams. I, I hope every soldier has to be successful in the Army. But I only ever set out to be a soldier. And, uh, and still to this day, my mother still calls me, I'm just her little soldier. You know, so that's where my most proud accomplishment is. And, and now I get to be a soldier for life. And that's important, too. Uh, and I know we'll talk about it, but I get to represent our soldiers for life for the chief staff of the Army in my responsibilities now that I've retired. Well, something I've always been impressed with you as we follow you from afar is that no matter how high you went on to rank, you always woke up at 5.30 and did PT with the other soldiers. You were always out and about. And really, if it weren't for your uniform and what looked like a quilt of accomplishments uh, badges on it, uh, the way you interacted with civilians like me and low-ranking soldiers is really what I think we're looking for in leadership here. So. It's got to be hard to stay humble in, in roles like those, though, but you obviously found it important. So what do you kind of hope your legacy is with this? Well, you know, and I can't take full credit for that. I was mentored by great leadership and I was inspired by some of the best leaders and I attracted myself to them. I said, hey, I want to be like this individual uh, and they invested in me. And I think that's what my success is, not solely on my own single accomplishments, but the ability to take that advice from those those mentors. Uh, obviously put your own twist on it. And I would say is that's important. Find the people that you want to emulate. Find the people that you want to be like and and create your own leadership style through their image. And obviously you got to be unique in yourself. Um, but uh, what's important is, and you brought it out, is you got to be positive every day. People want to be around positive people. Um, the Army puts you in some tough situations that are very stressful, and there's nothing worse than being mean <laughs> or mad in those situations. Um, even at war, you could be a positive leader, and, and soldiers appreciate that leadership style. So after you retired from the Army, you joined the Association of the United States Army, an organization I'm proud to be part of. Tell us about your new role there and how it's been going. Yeah, excellent. So I did have uh, the benefit of being called by our former president, General Carter Hamm, and being offered to serve as the vice president for non-commissioned officer and soldier programs here at the AUSA. Uh, we have a small directorate. Actually, uh, I have a director, Command Sergeant Major Retired Troy Welsh, that helps me lead this directorate. And there's really no left or right limit. Our job is to make sure that we fulfill the AUSA mission of educate, inform, and connect for our soldiers and non-commissioned officers. And that's from E1 to O10. Um, and we support the leadership of the Army, specifically the senior enlisted leaders of the, the United States Army, the National Guard, and the Army Reserve. Um, and we run an education uh, network of NCO and soldier programs that's specifically focused on our soldiers and junior leaders. You're coming here to talk to retired soldiers to talk about current issues that are affecting quality of life for them. Uh, so what are some of those issues we should know about and what are the solutions we should expect to hear about while you're here? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm coming to Fort Drum area for two reasons. One, to support our local AUSA chapter, but also in the capacity as the co-chairman of the Chief of Staff of the Army's Retiree Council. It's a volunteer job that I volunteer to do um, so I can continue to stay connected with our Soldiers for Life and the military community. Um, and it works good with the, the organization I work with because we share some of the same exact uh, missions and taking care of both current soldiers and Soldiers for Life. So recently, um, uh, we bring, and we do this every year, we bring in councils from all over the United States and abroad um, who bring issues from their installations for retirees. We consolidate those. 
Um, we run through those issues as a collective group in the Pentagon for one week each year. And at the end of the week, we consolidate and, and develop a report for the chief staff of the Army. And then the Army staff works on those issues and concerns to rectify them throughout the year. So I don't want to give it all away because I <laughs> want the retirees to show up at Fort Drum. And on Tuesday, 14 June, from 14 to 1500, we'll be in the multi-purpose auditorium with the Fort Drum Retiree Council and anybody that's welcome to come, retirees and active duty and soldiers or people who are concerned. And I'm going to talk to them about what we presented to the chief of staff of the Army. Now, I'll give you some highlights. Some of the issues and concerns that were brought to us by our uh, retiree councils are about medical, about communicating with our retired population. And we have some great initiatives and the Army staff is working some great things to help solve some of those issues concerned. What I can also tell you is, though, um, as this council has been stood up for many years and been very active and working very hard to resolve a lot of these issues, what we're seeing is not as many issues, which is good, right? And we get a lot of reports from our retirees that service is really good. But this is also an opportunity for you personally to show up. Tell me if you have an issue or concern that you want me to take directly back to the chief of staff of the Army. And that's my promise. Come out 14 June on Fort Drum. Listen to what I have to say. And I promise you, I will take your concerns back to the leadership. Well, you well, mentioned it here briefly, but you're traveling all over the country having these conversations. So what are some of those concerns that you've brought back? Uh, and yeah. what's the response what's like? I think the, the biggest one and number one, which has been for the last five years, is communication with our retired council. You know, a few years ago, we took our retired soldiers off of the Army Knowledge Online system, and for good reason, resources and security concerns. I don't want to let it out now, but we're working something to fix that. It's going to be called Soldier for Life Network, and the Army and AUSA are working together to help rectify that and create a new program for all retirees, but not just retirees, all veterans who've ever served in the United States Army. So more to come on that. I don't want to let too much out on that now because it's a work in progress. And really, the rest of the concerns really deal with access to health care and services. Um, this is obviously a big issue for our retirees because as you get up in age, like I am starting to now, you know, you start to focus more on your health um, and obviously issues arise as you get older. Um, we know that health care is an expensive endeavor for our military and our military has had to make some tough decisions with regards to the cost of health care for both active duty and retirees. And that's where a lot of the issues and concerns come. Access. You know, are we increasing costs for programs, for meds and things like that? And we help address those concerns and also advocate on behalf of our retirees on Capitol Hill to make sure that we keep all those things in a reasonable means for our retired population. Well, thank you again for taking the time today. And we're excited to see you here on the 14th of June. Well, thank you. We appreciate all your support for the local community and help to get the word out for our great soldiers on Fort Drum and the local community there, but also our soldiers for life in the surrounding area. Thank you for what you do every day, helping us communicate that message. Sergeant Major, thank you so much. Bye. Always great to see you, Alex.